What exactly does it take to reach a thousand followers on Twitter or get 10,000 likes on your Facebook posts? Or I should ask, what exactly does it cost to reach a thousand followers? In the age of social media and determining your influence by how many followers or friends you have, there's a growing market for those who wish to buy their influence. Yes, for a few bucks, you can buy followers on Twitter or likes on Facebook. In fact, during his presidential bid in 2012, most of Newt Gingrich's Twitter followers were fake, bought and paid for. And the U.S. State Department shelled out $630,000 between 2011 and this year for Facebook likes. Before Twitter, newspaper circulation or TV ratings numbers made it possible to quantify the readership and reach of a particular news organization. But now, when social media followers can just be bought, do we have to throw the old metrics in determining influence out of the window? Let's do some tech talk with digital media specialist at MacB Strategic, Ashton Moore here in DC, and Charlie Wartzel, deputy editor at BuzzFeed Forward, excuse me, deputy editor at BuzzFeed Forward from New York. Thank you both for uh, joining me here. So, Charlie, I want to start with you. Uh, do Twitter followers and Facebook likes have any meaning anymore? Well, absolutely. Uh, in an organic sense, uh, I, I think it's probably uh, it's difficult to estimate who, who's real and who's not. But you can get a general sense, uh, especially you know online with a lot of uh, journalists and, and people who have become personalities on Twitter. Um, and on Facebook, you know, those people, you really get an idea that they understand and know what they're talking about and, and that their followings have grown because they've earned them. Um, it's a little harder in the world of uh, brands and uh, uh, with some of, you know, the, the offbeat uh, celebrity types. Um, but yeah, I think they still matter. Ashton, do you think, uh, do you think buying Twitter followers is an acceptable, acceptable social media strategy? Well, it depends on what your strategy is. Um, a comprehensive, um, targeted strategy will actually have a plan to organically build an audience because you're sharing valuable content. Um, to buy followers is to essentially say that you don't have enough valuable content to organically gain those followers, I would say. So to buy them, um, it not only negatively impacts you because you're already admitting that you're not going to take the time to build a strategy. Uh, but it also means that when you buy them, most of the time they're just robots and drones and people who aren't real. And so they'll never share and they'll never like and they'll never retweet, if it's Twitter, the content that you produce. Charlie, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I guess you're, you're as, as Ashton said, you're kind of conceding that you don't have anything when you start buying uh, followers. But couldn't, doesn't that set off like a, an arm, quote unquote, arms race uh, when certain people are buying followers and you want to try and have influence too? Because let's face it, when you're on Twitter and you see someone you don't know, you look at their followers. Um, is that a concern? There's a case to be made that uh, actually, you know, a, a small brand starting out or a um, you know, a really low-level celebrity type could buy a small amount, say, from go from 100 to 1,000 followers um, in order to sort of, you know, build that base. Um, I think that's frowned upon, but I think the real question here is, well, you know, when you're looking at buying a million followers for $1,300, I mean, you can't really buy influence at a price like that. Uh, it, it just sort of doesn't seem to, to play out mathematically. And, and, and people, people are wise to this, I think. Ashton, moving forward, how are we supposed to determine the reach and influence of individuals? I mean, if you look at think of Twitter, each individual person is almost a journalistic entity out there trying to get their message across or whatever they're trying to do on Twitter. How can we determine the reach and influence if there's so many bots floating around with people here? That's a great question. And when, you, when you're determining, like if you asked me, if you said, look at this account, are they fake? Are they real? I, we wouldn't have to so much go into their actual people and look at them one by one, but what we could look at is the kind of reach that they have. There are things like clout that, that tell people how many people are affected, how many people retweet it. There are other things, uh, other social sharing tools online that will tell you how many people are just engaging on, for example, your Facebook page. And so a quick and easy way to do it would be to say, does this person have a million followers? If yes, then does this is the person getting commentary are they getting feedback are they getting input are people sharing their message and their brand and if the answer is no then it's a quick and easy way to 
make an educated guess that those million followers may have been bought. Char Charlie, last question. I'm picturing a time in the not too distant future, and we might already be there, when bots are outnumbering actual people on these social network platforms. What does that do to things like Twitter and Facebook? Does it affect them at all? I think that it's, uh, it all depends on the sophistication. There are accounts, they're not necessarily bots. I mean, some bots do retweet and, and like and things like that. But, uh, you know, in general, I think that that people people figure this out, um, and and you can look at an account that only retweets, you know, a certain person or a certain publication. It's very obvious. Digital media specialist Ashton Moore and Charlie Wartzel, deputy editor at BuzzFeed Forward. Thank you both.